Hello everyone! This is character design method number three out of a billion. Last week I covered the method of using music for inspiration on making your characters, and this week I am covering art. I am going to be showing a time lapse of my final sketch that I did for this character, so I'm going to go ahead and start that now so that I can get through all of my ranting to you guys while you guys watch some really cool stuff. When I'm not writing or role playing, chances are I'm doing something artistic. I love photo editing and manipulation, and I love painting too, but it's a lot harder to get better at it because I don't have the time to practice it with a toddler. If you're someone who loves to draw, this might be a great option, a great method for you when you are trying to make characters to write or role play. For me, I don't usually feel the most comfortable with creating paintings from scratch, so I do tend to find a portrait I like on the internet and edit the crap out of it to make it something new. I don't usually use this method as much as I do the previous two that I covered uh, last week and before that. Um, I covered Pinterest, using Pinterest to create characters, and I covered using music. And this one is art. I know a bunch of people do like using art to create characters, and that's why I'm covering it. It's a very popular way to create characters, and it can be really, really fun. For me, it's really just for the fun of it, but it can help with a lot of the design process. If you aren't comfortable with your artistic skills, there's nothing wrong with skipping this method altogether. I personally have a hard time finishing a piece, and art can end up making me feel drained, so I don't usually use this method with newer characters, but I do use this method on main characters, since I am really the only person that has a true vision of my character in my head. I like to at least attempt a portrait to satisfy my craving to see my characters. If you are the kind of person that gets inspiration for characters through this method of using art, um, please leave me a comment explaining what your thought process is when you're doing your art. I would love to be able to share another point of view on this method since it is not my first go-to. If I'm having a hard time getting into a character's mind, I may choose to draw them. Drawing for me gives me a really good grasp on what a character finds important about themselves. For instance, they may have a particular hairstyle. Why would they have that hairstyle? How does it make them feel? Why would they choose the clothing that they wear? Why is their necklace important to them? When you draw, you have to figure out a lot of those little details to make the portrait appealing. You have to focus on the details of your character, like jewelry or any accessories they may have, to make the picture itself look interesting. You have to pick and choose which things to add in order for the picture to tie together. In the process, you learn a lot about what your character finds important and who they are in terms of personality and why they choose to portray themselves in a certain way. For instance, this is my main character, Craig. I drew him several years ago when I first started digital painting and I already knew a ton about Craig when I painted this, but it was frustrating me so much that I couldn't find a portrait, like a life portrait, that looked like him. When I was drawing this, I knew a few things about his parents. He's Irish and he loves to wear chainmail and he had earrings at the time and he was also clean shaven and his hair looked a lot different than in this picture. Just like when I was writing him, I was also thinking about him at the back of my mind and asking myself what would be important to him about his appearance. I figured out that he would probably choose to get lip rings, so I added them. I also realized that Cray wasn't a boy anymore and certain things would be important to him like keeping a light but tidy beard. This picture actually helped me shape Cray into the Cray that I know and I write about today. He's a tiny bit different, but overall this really helped him take form. Editing is a lot more in my comfort zone and I've been editing over a decade and I find the process very relaxing and fun. I just recently did a edited portrait of one of my other characters, but I am not going to post that because I don't want to take credit for someone else's work because I just found a picture online that I edited the crap out of and kind of made it into my own character and I don't want to um, say that I 
did that portrait because I really didn't. I just edited it, but when I created her, I had a really hard time envisioning her. I knew a couple details about her, like her scarred eye and she had earrings and I knew her skin color uh, was blue because she's a fur bulk, but the rest I could not picture in my mind. I'm still learning a lot about her and I figured that spending some quote quote one-on-one -on -one time with her would help a lot. And it did. Like with the portrait of Cray, I realized what she finds important about her appearance. She appears much more mature than I thought she would and she takes great pride in her femininity. Since I don't feel quite overwhelmingly confident in making character portraits, I am going to link another video uh, below from a Ross Paints tutorial on YouTube and he does a fantastic job of explaining some key points in making characters through art. If you're interested, give it a watch and a thumbs up, and I will go off some of the things that he mentioned in that video and how it can relate to writing and role-playing. In that video, Ross explains some wonderful pointers about character design. His relates to art, but in any sort of form, characters do need certain things. One of my favorites is a topic that he covered, and that is about relatability. If you're a writer, this is a huge, important topic to cover, and I will cover it in more detail at a later time. I could go off on tangents about relatability and why it is so important and how to achieve it in writing, but I will spare you today. Ross gives the character several different appearances right up front. For us as writers and role players, this does come in a different form which is leaving things up to interpretation when you're writing. Like always, I recommend listening to your character. In art, this is much harder to do, but as writers and role players, we do have an advantage in that sense. When you begin writing or role playing a character, in a way, you are playing around with their design. The first few D&D sessions or the rough draft of your book is closely related to those little thumbnail designs that Ross does at the beginning of his video. Drafting and experimentation is key in writing and role playing, but it is something that I am trying to get better at art. Since I'm not fully confident in my art designing, I decided to combine last week's method, making characters through music, and this week's method into one. Last week, I briefly explained what my mind's eye was seeing when I listened to the music, but this week, I am just going to drop pictures that I roughly sketched out as I was listening. If you didn't read through last week's post, I am in the process of creating a new D&D character. He is without a name, but as you can see, I do have a pretty good idea of him by this point. I listened to a bunch of music when I was trying to design him, and I just sketched out whatever came to mind while I was listening to the music. So I am going to go over a few of those rough sketches that I decided to draw out while I was listening to music and just kind of give you guys a, an overall view, a sense of what I was thinking about when I was sketching these. The first song I listened to when I was sketching was Soulfly 5 by Soulfly. This version of the picture doesn't show exactly what the colors I had intended, but I was too lazy to change the colors back. So the colors were supposed to be a lot sharper and more vivid, but I just went with this because I was lazy and um, it doesn't really matter too much. I was thinking of some light shining down from the trees and maybe he had his, his head tipped back and he was just kind of sucking in all of the energy from the environment that he was in. And I definitely envisioned my character to be a male. With this picture, I really felt like he was someone that was slow to anger and he finds his peace in nature. The next song that I listened to was Winds of Change by David Arkenstone. With this song, I remember so much of my childhood, but putting that all aside, with my druid character, I was envisioning maybe a party in the middle of the forest. Maybe some people were gathered around the fire and dancing and laughing, and maybe someone was playing music over in the corner, and maybe there were a couple of deer just kind of peeking out of the, the forest, and I just kind of wanted to gather that environment. 
I knew that I wasn't going to continue this piece, so I just really, really roughly sketched it out and just kind of set it aside because I knew that this wasn't actually going to portray anything about him, but this was just kind of everybody else in his environment. Maybe this is where he feels most comfortable. I listened to a couple of songs with this. I listened to The Clouds Breathe For You by The Glitch Mob, and I listened to Cymatics by Nigel Stanford, and I also listened to Summer of the Occult by Seven Lions. I do have spoilers for my character in my last post, so I am not going to cover all of those spoilers in this lesson because this is a video, but if you do want to read more about all of my thought processes on those particular songs, you can go read that in my last post, and I do go into a lot more depth on what I was thinking about. But for this, I just kind of combined a bunch of those sketches into one so that I could just cover them all real fast and all together. With these sketches, I really wanted to portray him as a character. I felt like he was kind of a mysterious character, and I feel like he has a bow, but I'm not sure if that's something that a druid can have. I feel like it's a limitation in D&D, but I can look that up later. Right now, that's not my number one concern with this character, so. With one of those songs, I really felt like um, this character was going to be a drow or a half drow, um, which is basically like a dark elf. Typically in my experience, when I make background for a character, that background ends up getting completely trashed because the more I experience the character, the more I realize that my vision of his or her background is completely wrong. That's why I don't tend to write backgrounds for characters right up front, but with this character, I felt like his backstory was going to be very important, so I am in the process of figuring out what his backstory is, and I did make a few sketches of some of his background elements, and I won't describe these because they might be a little bit more of spoilers, but this, these are ones that I came up with for his backstory, but this just shows that I am thinking about his background while I'm also sketching. I don't usually make a background for the character because it usually ends up being wrong, and I also tend to obsess about it. So I'll start making a character and I'll start going into their background and I will spend months figuring out what in the world all of the stuff that they went through to get to where they're at today. And I get really into it and it soaks up a lot of my time. So that's another reason why I don't usually make backgrounds for characters, but I have made backgrounds for characters before I start playing them. For those kinds of characters, I don't particularly like to know exactly who they are at the moment. I focus more on who they were in the past. So I'll go through their entire background. I'll go from their birth up until today and figure out exactly where they've gone, who they have interacted with, what was important with them in their past. It can be a lot of fun, but it's, it's different than what I'm used to. Usually I know a character's personality and I know their interests first and I figure out their background later. Either way, when I make a new character, I like figuring them out in some certain way. It makes them feel more alive, and it makes me feel like I'm actually meeting a person instead of controlling a character. I want to figure them out as I play them. I don't want to hold them back. So that's why when I start a new character, I leave a bunch of things up to interpretation. It makes them feel much more organic and much more alive. This picture just kind of envisions him. Uh, he is not really doing much, but um, I just kind of wanted to see him as a person. I don't want to see him as a character. To me, characters are so much more than that. Their expressions and their feelings and their interest and their, their all sorts of different complexities that you have to figure out. So 
One reason why I do this method on occasion is so that I can get a deeper sense of who they are as a person, not as a character, but I can I can look at their face and I can see them and I am meeting this person for the first time because sometimes seeing things really helps you put things into perspective. I am excited to learn more about him when I am able to play him. So this is my druid character. And if you guys have any names for this character, please let me know because I am not the best at names. I've gone through a bunch of his backstory, but I still don't know his name. So if you guys have any names that you think that he looks like, um, yeah, comment and I might use it in my next D&D campaign. So if you guys really want to learn art, how to do portraits, one thing that you really need to focus on is anatomy. And that was something that I have just recently gotten into and I honestly have no idea how I have come this far without knowing anatomy. So it has really, really helped me grow as an artist. And if you are interested in learning more about being an artist, I definitely recommend learning some anatomy. One really, really great YouTube channel for anatomy is Proko, and I will also link that down in the description too so that you guys can follow him. He is fantastic at anatomy courses. He has a free course online and he does have a paid course as well for people who really want to learn more about the anatomy that he goes over, but I have learned a ton from him and he is a great teacher. Unfortunately, I did not get to finish this, but at least you guys got to see most of it and I will probably end up posting this when I am completely done with it. So this is him and this is kind of my process of using art for character design. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed just watching my process on making this portrait and I will see you guys next week. Bye!